All right. So everybody, welcome. This is our last um, webinar we're having for CNA week. It's called Be Your Own Best Supporter and Fan. And we're joined today by our own staff members, Joanne Caldy and Sherry Perry. So I'm going to turn it over to them and I hope you all enjoy. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, everybody. I am so glad everybody could join us today. It's a very important week for all of us. Uh, we know that this is our week. We've been celebrating. Uh, hopefully, everybody has got to shine bright this week. Uh, and that was part of what our webinar is going to be about. Um, be your own best supporter, um, self-advocation. Um, we'd like to say happy CNA week. And also, um, don't forget about CNA Fest is coming up. Uh, so we want everybody that, that can join us on that to join us. There's a lot of information out there. We've got a couple of Facebook pages going on about it. We actually got to experience the cruise and, and get to see what all y'all were going to get to do while we were there. And it was a great time. Uh, we posted a lot of pictures in um, CNA Fest 2024, The Maiden Voyage. So please, uh, if you're going, jump on that page and get accepted in for an invite. Um, so one of the questions I want to start out with the, the webinar this week is I want to ask you, uh, and you can put in the chat, um, have you ever self-advocated? And if you have, what did you do and how did it go? We, we want to we see some interaction with us. Uh, and I'm going to turn it over and let Joanne Caldy um, start this part, and I'll be jumping in and out. So, Joanne, I'm going to let you take it away. Okay, thank you. Hi, welcome everybody. So great to see you. Thanks for coming out today. Um, well, yeah. General, oh, sorry, I got my dog here, and he's barking, and he better shut up. He's going to be dinner tonight. Um, okay, self advocacy is basically the ability to speak up on your own behalf to get something you want. And there are many benefits to this. Uh, you empower yourself and others by, by honing your self-advocacy skills and um, being able to, you know, like I said, make change, get things that you think need to happen. Um, you take control of your own life, you set boundaries and make choices. Uh, you see open-ended questions, you use open-ended questions to engage in conversations. You become a better uh, speaker, a better listener, and um, you can become a more effective problem solver. So um, definitely it's a win-win situation. And the truth is when you do self-advocacy, as a rule, it's not just something that benefits you, it benefits those around you as well. So in, in essence, you really become a leader, a team leader, because you help others get things that they need as well. Um, there's a few steps to self-advocacy. First of all, you need to understand yourself, your values, your needs, your goals, what your rights are as well. And to do some of this, to help understand who you are, you can ask a few questions. Um, you know, what are my values? What matters most to me and why? Uh, what are my particular needs? And what do I need to accomplish to be able to do the job I have now well or to get to the next level of, you know, of work or a career that you want to go to? And, um, you know, what are your strengths and growth areas? And I would add there, um, not, I know I hate the word weaknesses, but, but are there, but are there skills that you think you need to work on or are there tasks or activities that are out of your comfort zone? So once you understand all of that, um, you need to understand, uh, where, where you fit in, in the whole global scheme of things and particularly in your, in your job and in your organization. In other words, having a good understanding of your organization's values, rights, resources, et cetera. So you can determine what um, of the things you're, self -advoc you're advocating for, how that fits in with your organization and what they do and what they think. And to do some of that, you can ask yourself a few questions. How can I serve the team and the organization as a whole? What are my responsibilities to the organization? And what are the organization's responsibilities to me? It's not a one-way street. Um, you know, what, you know, do your values and talents match what the organization values? And I'll just like to share a little personal thing there is that, you know, you can't, if you find that something you want to advocate for, if you're advocating for yourself, say you're advocating for a different role or, or more money or, or whatever the situation is, 
If that doesn't match your organization's goals, you're probably not going to get it. I mean, I, I mean, it sound negative, not that you're not going to get it, but you might want to rethink it. You know, I had a situation where, um, you know, um, a client wanted to, you know, re reduce my fee and they were hurting financially. That's, that was what it was told. And I tried to explain to them, you know, what I've done and what I've accomplished and how I contribute to the organization. And none of that really made a difference because my need to be able to feel valued for the work I've done and do didn't match their goal. And their goal was strictly to cut costs. So if your goals and your organization goals are a mismatch, that's when you run into some challenges. So it really is important to know your goals in there to see if they match. And at that point, you might want to consider, um, you know, targeting those goals, which are more reachable. Um, so you can also ask, how do you serve the organization? How does your work benefit you? And then you need to develop um, a support system and find out, you know, what those around you are thinking and get them on board with some of your thinking. So it's important to have a direct line of communication with your manager when possible. Um, it's important to be a part of organizations, groups, committees, et cetera, where you can find support. And that is both within and out of the organization. And, and you know, if there, if there are committees, if your organization has a committee like a, a QAPI or a quality improvement committee, um, and you think you have got something to add to it, you know, ask to join it. Tell them you'd really like to be part of that and that you think you can contribute. Um, if you want to go in, you can go in with your both barrels and basically give them some ideas specifically at how you think you could contribute to that. Um, you know, be an ally, ally advocate for others as well. You know, it's not just asking about the things that you want. Find out how you can help your colleagues as well. And then, um, you know, be a lifetime learner. Continue to develop yourself and build relationships, um, build skills, all those kinds of things. Just, you know, always be looking around, seeing what you can do, seeing how you can make a difference. And look for those opportunities to, to self-advocate. Now, you can communicate your um, needs. And if you can advocate for something, you can do it formally. You can prepare a, a document with what it is you're looking for, what it is you want, um, you know, how that might look, um, you know, why it's important. You can put that all in writing. And, for example, when CNA Week came up, um, you know, some of you may have gone to your DON or, or some administrator, medical director, and said, hey, CNA week's coming up. Here's what I think we should do. Here's why it's important. How can I take the lead on this? How can I help? So, you know, it can be more of a formal situation. But, you know, self-advocacy can be very small. It doesn't have to be a big deal. And I'll give another personal example. I recently dyed my hair pink. And to me, I wanted to do it because I wanted to show myself that I could do something new, that I could do something bold, that I could take a chance, and that I was confident enough to deal with it. And that's part of self-care, but that's also self-advocacy. Sometimes self-care and self-advocacy are, are very similar and, and go together. Um, I guess the final thing I would say is that don't be discouraged if if you don't always get what you want when you self-advocate. If 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 you push for something and it doesn't happen. Um, again, like the situation I was talking about, sometimes your goals and the organization's goals just don't meet. What they're trying to do doesn't meet what you're trying to do or what you want to do. So, um, you know, don't be discouraged though. You know, pick and choose your, your battles, so to speak. And um, in the meantime, every day is an opportunity to self-advocate and, and help others and to advocate for others as well. Take time every day to tell somebody what they mean to you or what they've done that you think's great or why you admire them. Try it and I'll tell you, their eyes light up, they smile because we don't do it that often. And it makes a huge difference. I mean, if I write an article and somebody writes to me and says, hey, that was a really great article or um, boy, you interviewed me and you made me sound so good. I mean, I'll read that email over three and four times and just smile and smile, it means so much. So I'd say, to, I challenge you to do that every day for somebody, and you'll see that it comes back to you as well. So thank you, Sherry. Turn it back over to you. 
self-advocacy also plays a big role in how happy you are at work. And you can be more effective at work if you're able to communicate what you need and want with other people. And take stock in your strengths, whether they're your soft skills or your, or, you know, those hard skills, you know, self-assessment sometimes is really hard, but, but to be the, a, the better person, we have to step back and say, you know, what, what am I doing good? And what am I not doing good? And that helps us build because as perfect as, you know, sometimes we think we are, we're not always that perfect. And we need to take a look at ourselves too before we approach other people about certain issues. Um, while being a self-advocate and standing up for yourself at work is very challenging, but it can also help you realize that what your career goals will be and make you more secure you know, in yourself and in your work. And I noticed that um, um, a lot of peer recognition is coming into play. For me, I'd rather have a peer recognize me or uh, you know, appreciate me, uh, verbally tell me that I'm doing something that they appreciate because it means more because it's coming from the heart. It's true. It's not lip service. God knows we get enough lip service in what we do. And I know when I worked at the nursing home and I worked those double shifts, it was hard to, to pull a 16 hour shift and you, you was, you know, doing the best you could do. And when my coworkers come in for the next shift. And the first thing I hear my I hear out of their mouth is, oh my God, I'm so glad you you were working today and I'm following you because I know I'm gonna have a good night. And that made me feel wonderful because I knew I was doing what I do best. And I was taking care of my residents and then I was leaving my my patients the way I would want them to be left for me. So, um, you know, peer recognition is becoming big. And, and the point I want to make on that is for CNA week. So I know every year we put on, on our Facebook pages and stuff, what did you do during CNA week? You know, was you recognized? And we get a lot of no's and it was horrible. Stop. Stop letting that be the way it is because you need to own your profession. This is your profession. It doesn't matter if your employer recognizes you, recognize yourself and recognize each other because that's what matters. We have to work together. I've got a blog that'll be coming out here in, in, in today or tomorrow. It's called Let's Celebrate. And it's all about CNA week and what you can do and ideas that you can do to promote CNA week yourself. You don't always have to go have permission from administration. You can do a potluck. You can do stuff outside of work together, uh, whatever it is to celebrate you because it's your profession, it's your career. You need to own it. Um, so I wanted to talk a bit about there's three key elements to self-advocacy. First, you've got to understand your needs. And then you've got to realize what kind, of, what kind of support is available. And then you've got to be able to communicate those needs in a professional way. We're not all perfect at that, but we need to have all that together before we approach anybody when we're self-advocating. Um, there's three C's of there's three C's to advocacy: communication, collaboration, and persistence. And you always stick to the truth. Um, also, I wanted to say that there was a golden, there's some golden rules of advocacy. Be polite, be prepared, be persistent. So to me, the hardest part of advocacy as a CNA, we're always told that our identity and our experiences um, are not somehow, they're somehow invalid. They're not important. Um, and that's hard um, for people to overcome when people make you feel inferior. Um, so we have to be able to be confident and um, own our profession to be able to go out and say what it is we need to say. We can't let them drag us down. And I feel like a lot of times that's what happens and we feel like it's, it's not worth the fight or the effort um, to self-advocate for things that we need and want. And, and to remember that when you're self-advocating, 
are you really just self-advocating? Because if things change because of things that you said or you asked for or you promoted for change, you're not just helping you. You're helping your coworkers and you're helping the people that you care for every day. Because as we all know, if it's positive for us, it's positive for our patients and our residents. So, um, and, that there's, and like Joanne said, there's a process. You've got to research your issue, you know, know, know what it is you're asking for. Um, and then you want to go out and you want to find some coworkers who agree with you and build those alliances so that when asked, because I guarantee you, if you go advocate for something, they're going to go out and ask other coworkers, do they feel the same way? You know, or is this how y'all think too? And so you, 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 you know, those, you get your alliances together. So everybody's on the same page when they go and ask. And then know who your opposers are going to be. Know who your negative people are. Know who's going to, and 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 y'all think about what what they're going to say and what's going to be the negative points of what you're asking for. So you can set clear goals on a time schedule that will you know work for everybody. Um, and then also I was going to kind of end with this quote um, that I've seen actually today by Maya Angelo. And it says, I learned a long time ago, the wisest thing I can do is be on my own side, be an advocate for myself and others like me. So you've got to believe in yourself, believe in your skills, believe in your knowledge to be able to advocate. And not everybody can advocate. Not everybody can have that strength. If you have that strength, then you have to own it and step up for not just yourself, but for others, too. And I know I see some stuff people and you, and you advocated. Some of them was, said they advocated, you know, for other things. And I, I like to see that. I want to know what you advocated for and what was your process and how did you do it? And um, Joanne, is there anything else that you want to add to any of that? There we go. OK. I, I like to, I'm curious, has anybody successfully advocated uh, for the funds to go to CNA, we, uh, CNA Fest? Has anybody um, managed to do that? And if so, how did that go or how did you do it? And I guess we're waiting for answers. And, and Sherry, please, please, um, you know, jump in on this. But I would say that, you know, if you haven't done it and you want to go to CNA Fest, that you can use some of the things we've talked about today to, um, to, to advocate for that. And uh, if you need some talking points, you know, knock us here and we've got lots of them. We, we have lots of reasons why it's important for you to be there and we can certainly help you with that. But, you know, you, you can put it in writing and do all the things that we've mentioned today. And again, like Sherry was saying, I, I think one key thing might be to find, find your ally in management, you know, a decision maker who's most likely to be on your side. Um, you know, say it's the medical director or the administrator, somebody that you have a good relationship with, and maybe start with them because they're more likely to be open to, to you know, your request. Um, and I'd say, you know, be willing to talk about it and um, just be very clear why it's important. And, um, you know, uh, like I said, we can help with the talking points, but I think it's worth trying to advocate for that because it is important. You know, they may offer compromise, so we'll pay half. And the question is, if you're willing or able to do that, that might be an option as well. But Sherry, what advice would you give people advocating to be able to attend CNA Week? I mean, CNA Fest. Yeah, you know, and and all, and my my advice is, that, you know, go to them with, hey, this is what we want to happen, or you know, this is what we'd like to see, and we're willing to do this if you're willing to do this and don't, you know, sometimes it's, you've got to give a little to get a little. So mm -hmm. it's not just give it to me free, free, free. And um, I expect you to pay everything, but we're willing to fundraise that, you know, we're willing to fundraise if you'll allow us to do that, you know, mm -hmm. here in the facility and uh, we're, or we're willing to, you know, uh, you know, take up collection or we're willing to do whatever it is you're willing to do to make that happen. And I feel like that gives administration, you know, well, they must really want to go because they're willing to give up their time and, and other things to make this happen. 
And sometimes that's what they need to see that that we're willing to that we really want this to happen. So we're we're ready to give up some of our precious time and 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 everything to to make it happen. You know, and, and like it or not, people when you're asking for something, people want to know what's in it for me. So uh, you need to be prepared to let them know what's in it for them, which is, you know, things like, you know, you're going to go get these skills and, you know, you're going to learn this or that. Um, but, you know, if you can be specific, you know, that, hey, we've had this one issue on our floor and I'm going to go and I'm going to be talking to dozens of experienced CNAs plus experts in the fields and I'm going to get answers for that. I'm going to get a solution for that. You know, so be prepared to be very specific about what they're going to get out of it. And don't make it all about you. Is that fair to say, Sherry? It's very fair to say. Because everybody does want to know, well, if I'm putting forth the money and I've got to pay somebody to work your shift while you're gone, what 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 am I going to get in return? Exactly. And you've got to have answers. So that's, yeah. that goes back to researching. Researching what you want and make sure you have all the answers uh, when you go in. Mm-hmm. I mean, it might can be. Can I jump in? Oh, sure. Yeah. Please. Oh, I'm sorry, Joanne. We had a no, question no. that I thought you might want to address. Okay. Um, it was how do you self advocate for yourself with negative CNAs? Unfortunately, we all have, sometimes we have more negative Nancy's than we do positive Patty's. So, uh, but I feel like if you you wear them down basically don't let them get you down you just keep on trucking um you know r riding that train to the station and um eventually uh the positivity will hopefully outweigh the negativity um and then when they see that you get what you want because you were positive and not negative then you can flip them to the other side and, you know, sometimes it's an uphill battle because negativity a lot of times outweighs positivity. But when we do win, it's a win. And um, I feel like sometimes you would uh, you will end up on the on the bigger side of the picture and maybe turn a negative person into a positive person. Yeah, I think, too, if you just um, focus on on those who are positive, who do share your goals, who do share uh, uh, the, you know, the, the, the desire for the things you're advocating for and partner with them because, you know, there is strength in numbers. And then, you know, hopefully once the, the negative people see what you accomplish working with yourself and working with others who are positive, they're like Sherry said, they're more likely to come on board. And if they don't, you yeah, just have to let them go because they're just, you know, some people are just never going to are, you know, you're just not going to change some people and you have to, to be able to let that go and, and know where to put your energy. You want to put your energy into the positivity and put your energy into those, uh, you know, advocacy efforts that are most important to you and quite frankly, most likely to succeed. Some things you may want, but you may have to let some things go. I agree. Joanne, do you have any final things that you want to say before we start wrapping this up? I don't think so. Just that, you know, let us know if, if you need help uh, with CNA Fest, your CNA Fest self-advocacy, um, you know, contact any of us if you want some, you know, some points or we can help you develop your, your pitch, whatever it is. Uh, Lori, I hope I haven't spoken out of, out of school on that, but, you know, we want to help you be able to go. If there's something we can do as a staff here, let us know and we'll certainly try. Um, so we're getting to be uh, four minutes away from um the end of the webinar and as we know cna week is this week and we at naca have tried to um give you all a lot of positive things the uh, webinars i hope y'all like the video that came out um the images to put on facebook um but also we have one more member perk that we are, when you get off the webinar, it will be posted um, on our Facebook page. It's for members only, so make sure you sign up. Uh, and it is our new members only birthday club. So um, it's set up in the members only part of the website. You can go on there and fill out the information and you will receive um, happy birthday email, a $5 um, off gift card to the pro shop 
and you'll get a personal birthday card from the board of directors with a small token of our appreciation for continuing to be members with us every year. So we want to make sure you get on there and, 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 you know, take all advantage of everything that NACA has to offer for you. We try to come up and come up with so many ideas to engage everybody and keep y'all uh, on board and interested in what we do and to uh, advocate and, um, you know, just be good CNAs, making a positive influence and promoting change. And is there any more questions, comments? Nope. Everybody just seems really excited about the birthday club and everything you've had to say. So thank you both so much. Um, for those who wanted, oh, Desmond's with us Desmond also. Says, for those thank that, you for coming. <laughs> that asked, um, you will receive the recording of this either later this week or the first of next week. So if you had things you wanted to refer back to, you'll be able to do that there. So thank you all. Have I hope you've had a wonderful CNA week and we will see you at our next webinar.